Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today is a little different. Uh, we've been talking in the past about the uh, nano VNA as a vector network analyzer and all the cool things it can do from being a simple SWR indicator to doing lots of other things, uh, including transmission line analysis. And um, an Augie, Stephen Jensen, uh, sent me a set of charts. The first time he showed me these charts, they were proprietary to a project his company was working on. Now, he has sent me the charts again so that they are not proprietary anymore. And uh, what we're trying to do here is he's uh, building a project that has a little uh, GPS antenna on it. And of course, from the antenna to the uh, GPS chip, there's a transmission line. It's not very big, but it's transmission line. And he used his vector network analyzer to figure out uh, the characteristics of the transmission line and found it to be quite unsat unsatisfactory. So he's going to show here what we need to do to understand what is going on, how to use a vector network analyzer, specifically a Smith chart, to figure out how to get to the right thing, and uh, the, the right transmission line parameters, and then what he did to make that happen and keep the costs down. It's a really interesting uh, sort of little case study in the modern engineering. Uh, some of this is way above my head, but he's laid it out very carefully on these charts. So let's go ahead and view this. We'll view this on the overhead camera. And then uh, when we're done, we'll come back and summarize. Before we jump into these charts, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Larry Navarre, uh, who is a new patron of mine on patreon.com. He's helping keep this channel going with his financial support. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's take a little closer look at those charts. These are charts that he put together about how to use the vector network analyzer and its Smith chart capability to do a transmatch design. In other words, a uh, match between the GPS transmitter receiver chip and uh, the actual antenna for that. And it's interesting. He had a problem, and the problem was a new product with uh, GPS has poor GPS performance. This right here is a cellular module with GPS, okay, and the GPS antenna is this little tiny thing right here. So he's got to get from here to here. And you say, well, why not a piece of coax? Well, we're talking circuit board kind of stuff uh, right here. Uh, GPS usually takes several minutes to uh, warm up and see the satellites under clear skies. Uh, the antenna covers 1.559 gigahertz to 1.6 gigahertz. Okay, 1.607 gigahertz. That's the global um, navigation system or GPS, the global positioning system. And this is what it actually looks like in uh, the test chamber for uh, all of this is RF absorbent material. There's the little uh, circuit board and here's a GPS antenna right here. So this is a 3D antenna measurement chamber with the device under test on the foam pedestal. So everything here either absorbs RF, you just put, uh, you know, carbon, uh, like uh, powdered carbon in here, and that will absorb and uh, create heat for anything that comes off. So this is the equivalent of one of those chambers you can go into where there's no sound, where you can test uh, audio equipment and so on. Okay, so let's... Um, Take a look at this. 
the um, GPS antenna expected versus actual target. A minus 12 dB return loss at 1575 megahertz. Minus 12 dB. Well, uh, hmm. This is a return loss again. Minus 12 dB would be right about there. So in the area of interest, he's losing. Uh, he's got a return loss that's okay, I guess, for what he's doing. Very low return loss. A low return loss means a low SWR. But he's got it at the wrong frequency. Um, the initial tuning, this is what the spec, okay? This is the initial tuning. Uh, did fairly well, although it's only, uh, let's see. Okay, so we've got, um, anyway, you can see the 0 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And he's got his return loss at too high a frequency. Remember, we wanted it to be from 1.56 to uh, 1.6 uh, gigahertz. Okay, fairly narrow band. And over here on this actual measured band, uh, it's too high. The dip is too high. Okay, now what he did was take some more measurements with his big question is he's got that short path between the antenna and the load and all he has are fixed capacitors and inductors this right here is an antenna tuner unit they're large, they're expensive. He could have put a tuner in there and tuned that very short uh, transmission line. So these are the inductors, and then capacitors just look like little uh, boxes, okay, that are soldered on the pad on either side. So he wants to make, and you'll recognize this, as a Pi network. This is a classic Pi network from the old tube uh, radios, the output network is capacitors and an inductor. So you see what's old is new again. Now here are the artwork requirements. This is a little hard to see right here. But here's what he's looking for as far as return loss. Okay, and he's up here. He wants to move this down this way so that he can get that proper point where it needs to be. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've got this side of the printed circuit board. You can see sort of a side view of it here. Zoom down in on it as far as it'll go. Okay, um, and I can get it up higher so you can see it. Uh, it's on the edge of the circuit board is the antenna. You can see it in the 3D form right there. So he's got to go across that circuit board. Here is the pad for the antenna. Okay. And this uh, distance between all holes and copper edge. And he's got all kinds of things here. Moving a ground plane uh, resulted in a 50 megahertz shift. You know, it, like I said, with antennas, everything affects everything. And this is the transmission line right here. Of course, you'd need a microscope to uh, really see it. So what he did with the nano VNA testing is he took the, um, he swept, basically, this is the um, antenna right here. The traces go this way over to the chip that will take care of it. And so the circuit looks like this. It's got uh, the generator or antenna here and then the s source sink over here, okay? And he is uh, putting the nano VNA on it to test it and he's seeing where the low point is and then when he does it on a Smith chart, he gets this, and, and you can't really see the lines on there. 
There are lines on there. But he's over here. Okay, he's in the wrong place. So we're going to look at what we can do with that nano VNA. Okay, so from the VNA over here, we get these parameters and then put them in SimSmith software. Okay, and you can pick down here a variety of circuit configurations, okay, to put in there um, to get this uh, to work. Now, the way the uh, Smith chart works, there are circles, you can see them here, that are constant impedance circles and so on. And there's the capacitive and the inductive. So what he wants to do is, on the Smith chart, find out how much capacitance and inductance it takes to get to the target. The target for a Smith chart is the center of the chart. Okay, so he's got that dot. Now what he wants to do is find the right capacitance and inductance to put in uh, that uh, Pi filter he talked about. So he's going to choose a network to get to the center. You've got a variety of networks you can choose from. And I'll just zoom in down here on these. This one is just a capacitor, adding a capacitor. If you add a capacitor of any kind, it moves it along the capacitive reactance line. You get down to the center line, but not to the middle, of course. So here's another one with uh, just a capacitor uh, across it, shunt, and it goes down over here. Okay. Uh, so here is just a coil here, it moves it that way, and a coil shunt moves it over here. Okay, so we need a, a better network. So to hit the goal, he could do two of them like this. Okay, the goal is uh, Sim Smith file libraries and so on and so forth. We've got... Uh, our generator, our capacitance, and capacitance over here, and uh, our load. Okay, so that way he gets just enough capacitance in the first one to get to here, and then does enough in shunt to get over to here in the center. Now the center in the Smith chart is a match. Okay, so he was very happy with that. Now, the next question he had was, how accurate is the nano VNA? Well, he did a, um, a chart on the nano VNA where he, you know, got all the parameters and got the Smith chart over here. Unfortunately, the lines don't print very well. And he compared it to the Keysight N... 9913A, which is a vector network analyzer his lab has. And he found out that the nano VNA, which cost 50 bucks, compared to the Keysight N9913A, which is over 14,000 bucks, they're only less than a dB off, a little bit more than a half dB off, okay? So what he's saying is that the nano VNA can do a very good job where traditionally you have to get really expensive equipment to do this type of uh, analysis. Now that might have been a little bit far out, but uh, it has some interesting ideas about how you can uh, take a transmission line and test it by putting a signal in one end and getting it out the other. This is what a two-port a vector network analyzer will do for you. And the nano VNA is a two port network a vector analyzer. You can put a signal in, you take a look at how the signal comes out, and you look at the relationship, the phase relationships, and all of that sort of thing for these passive networks, which means inductors, resistors, and capacitors. Okay. 
And then you can determine the characteristics of that network. And you can modify it to make it a, a frequency, uh, you know, a bandpass filter, low-pass filter, high-pass filter. Uh, or you can use it to determine what kind of reactants you need to add to, say, a permanently installed transmission line for a permanently installed single-frequency antenna, sort of like the GPS, which has a narrow band of frequencies. So it's an extremely useful tool. So I don't pretend to have explained absolutely everything he was doing, but we do know a couple things we can get out of this. One is that if you've got a transmission line that is behaving badly, adding lumped reactive components to it, capacitors and inductors, can bring it back to the center. In the center of the Smith chart is the one-to-one -one match point. Uh, we do notice in passing that everything with reference to a Smith chart has to be normalized so that the impedance at the center is 1 ohm rather than 50 ohms. So there has to be some normalization there. But from the Smith chart, you can actually determine values of what you need to get a wonky transmission line down to where it's well behaved. And that's what they did for this product and it worked very well. So Stephen, I'd like to thank you very much for sharing uh, what you're doing. I hope I did your charts justice. I'm sure if I did not, I'll hear about it in the comments. So there you have it. If you've watched this far, uh, it might mean you actually like this channel. And if you'd like to help support it, you certainly can. Go to decastlercom support and pick a method that works for you. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. And until then... 73.